Good evening. Welcome to the Camera Artist Guild Thursday Critique. I am your host, George Deloach. I'm a portrait artist and photographer's coach, and this is where we help photographers learn to master the photographic arts. Uh, we're going to jump into the broadcast. we got some great images here tonight, so stay tuned. I'm going to spin around and kick this thing off, and let's get going. Uh, another one to Keith Davis. Uh, Keith, I don't know why we l took off the top of her head on this one when you have so much torso down here. Uh, I can see if you're doing a tight crop, but on this one it's not, so leave, some, leave the head there. Uh, you might as well see all of her body rather than making it look like she's squeezing out of the top of the page with her head all the way up to the very top of the page. And, and much of her torso down below. Okay, uh, there we go. And uh, one more key, this does standard lady. And uh, we'll knock that out. Let's uh, jump on over here, Elie. Again, another one at the beach. And on this one, take some time to really think when you are doing your images about how your model is looking. Uh, I think that this would have made a much stronger image if she had, rather than holding her hand to her head, pull this wrap around her going in the other direction, maybe put her arm on her hip or something like that. That would take care of all this lower abdomen area, which is not as becoming as it could be. And uh, I think she would be happier with the image. We are all very body conscious. Uh, and so I think that uh, just stopping and bringing your model into a pose, taking a look at it through the viewfinder, really examining all of the areas. Now, I love the shallow depth of field. That's fine. Uh, I would have preferred to be lower on camera angle, closer to her eye level rather than looking down in this direction. But the main thing is, is bring that wrap around here so that she can, uh, that, that wrap will help her look slimmer. And I think she'll be much happier with the image. Okay, thank you for submitting. Uh, Diana Rutger. Uh, nice image, Diana. Uh, you are really getting good at these composites. Each time you do them, you get better, you learn more, you get better skills at it. Uh, the dance moves are phenomenal. You put them all together very nicely in a composite. Uh, this, I think, would uh, win awards, or if not awards, it would score very well in, in PPA print competition. It should merit without a problem at all. Uh, I think it would do well. So congratulations. You are really, really improving on those composites. I'm watching you move and, and develop as you go. And uh, Diana's our, our uh, Midwesterner, uh, Iowa. And uh, just really good work. Okay, uh, this is Diana again. And on this one, you were struggling a little bit. Uh, she looks a little uncomfortable. I know you got the, you're, you're working with the uh, two light sources. Congratulations. Uh, you've got, uh, I don't know whether this is the sun or a second light source. I kind of tend to believe it's a second light source because there's very little illumination down here in the grass. And if it were the sun, they would be there. Uh, it looks like late in the day. Uh, and I would say just work on her pose because you got that dancer in so many elegant poses. She looks just a wee bit awkward, uh, in, in the image. But I like what you're trying to do and keep on keep on pressing yourself to improve. And I don't know how I missed that one. I guess maybe I get to them. And this is one more from Diana. I just threw this in. She put up a, uh, a video of this big steam train. I call, they call it the big boy. I love steam engines. Uh, and uh, this steam train went through her town and people turned out to take a look at it. And... I really love the way you were able to uh, add additional stuff in Photoshop there to kind of highlight the feel of the engine. You can really feel it. You see the smoke bellowing from the smokestack. Uh, looks like it's going into a turn. Uh, just a lot of really cool things about the image. I like it. I like the treatment. So uh, congratulations. When I was a kid, 
uh, I could lay in my bed at night and I could hear the steam engines coming down the tracks that were not too far away from where I live. And uh, they always made me want to get busy and go somewhere. Uh, I'd love to go do a steam engine ride here one of these days. Okay, Derek Rudger. Rogers, Rutger, <laughs> where I get that from, Derek Rogers. Uh, Derek uh, owns Concrete Studios, and he's got a lot of these uh, studios, and I'm sure this is one of the rooftops with the studio. Very elegant. Uh, this is all uh, available light stuff, no additional light source. Uh, got all the models to work together, nice symmetry. Uh, nice, Derek. Uh, another model with, uh, you know, a nice pose. Uh, you do see the skyline. I think you can maybe work your composition a little stronger with this one. Uh, I, I almost would really like to lower the camera angle again to get some of the city skyline up there and this bar out of the center or this wall out of the center of her torso. Uh, I think that if you went lower, uh, you would have more of the city in the background. I think it would maybe make a bit more striking pose but again you are an accomplished photographer and know what you're doing so if you got what you wanted congratulations and then this one is outstanding the movement uh, the vertical leap the timing uh, the lighting and all all of it works together excellent excellent work Derek okay Willie Demetrius Richardson uh, we've got the, the farm girl uh, shot, two of them. This one's nice, uh, kind of the older truck. Uh, and maybe just a little bit more of her face towards the camera. So, But uh, for what you were trying to do, you accomplished it. Uh, you've got nice warm feelings to it. She's feeling warm and comfortable. I imagine this is a senior shoot, so uh, well done. And now this is another one of the same one. And get her to turn her body a little bit so that you're not getting her just so broad on. A little bit of a turn would add a little bit more dimension to it. And raise your light source. Right now your light source is, is uh, your artificial light source is about level with her face. And it's kind of gives split lighting if you just bring it up a little bit, raise it up into about a 45 degree angle above her head. It would give a much nicer light pattern on her face. Okay, Ray Jackson. Let me grab a little coffee here. I'm starting to dry out. Okay, that's better. Uh, nice model, nice skin tones nice everything but you got our bullseye dead center of the page what we used to call uh, a, uh, a um, key key uh, keyhole which uh, you guys don't even know what a skeleton keyhole is anymore but when I was a kid there was a thing that looked like that that was a skeleton keyhole um, all of this area up here doesn't all that negative space doesn't do any good bring that down crop that down uh, you can take that down. Let's see. Let's uh, do a four by five crop, and let's just uh, bring it down. Yeah, there we go. See, I like to bring it in almost to where I got the eyes on that one third compositional line. Maybe something like that. That's a possibility, or uh, even go for a horizontal. And there you can take off a little bit of the head there. Let's go just above the collarbone. And let's bring that eye over and drop it right on the one third line. And now let's take a look at it. And I think that that's a much stronger image. Uh, she's a beautiful lady. Yeah, well, well, everything else is there. Just look at that composition and consider some possibilities on different crops. Okay, Maurice. Oh, Maurice James Stewart. I'm sorry. Oh, man, Maurice. You, you killed it on this one, brother. You killed it on this one. I love this. 
Uh, I never would have thought about photographing a bottle from under through a glass surface. That's because understand that the liquor is called silver and it is clear and the glass is clear and the bottle with everything except for just the blue cap up there is clear and it's shot through clear glass. Well done. Well done, man. <laughs> I like it. I think uh, you're just really improving so much on your product stuff. Just keep going. You're going to be forced to reckon with here in a little while. You better start putting together a really nice portfolio because I think uh, you're getting close to being ready to shop it out there and uh, start really going for some big time ad money. Okay, uh, Lynn Green. Uh, nice image, nice colors, nice, nice uh, skin tones. The composition, uh, I struggle with the composition some, Lynn, on this. Uh, I've been a biker all my life. I started out on two wheels when I was 15 years old, and I have ridden, you know, with motorcycle clubs and ridden all of my life. So I know two wheels and the two-wheel community, the motorcycle community, and no disrespect intended, but this motorcycle is just as important to this guy probably as his uh, as his lady. Uh, I know that that's probably not the politically correct thing to say, but uh, show the motorcycle. And there's no need to crop off feet and, and legs like that. Pull on back, get that full motorcycle, drop the uh, camera angle again. Bring that camera angle down this time to about waist level so that you got you can see the whole bike man i know he spent hours polishing that thing getting it ready for this shoot uh and uh then do some with him looking the way he is and then have him kick the glasses up on top of his head or something like that so that uh you can see his eyes and i mean otherwise their styling she is he is uh, it's it's a really a cool image I just think you could take it to the next level by taking into those those couple of things into consideration. And uh, Lee McDowell, again, Lee is known for his uh, photographs of women on white. I believe Lee uh, Lee was uh, the Jet Magazine photographer for years, and these are nice. What can I say? It's a nice photograph. Okay, hang on there, because I went, uh, I lost the sound, and I wanted to show you some stuff uh, about uh, the first image, and you couldn't hear what I was saying. So I'm going to go back over and go through it again, just as soon as I can pull up uh, the file for it and find it. Okay, I'm going to go, this is, uh, whoops. This is another Lee McDowell image. Let me pull this one up. And what I was saying on this one, on the earlier one, is I love the the uh, the symmetry, the 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 symmetry of the entire image. I love the symmetry. I love all the lines and patterns and shapes. Uh, the black and white uh, just pops. The only thing is, I kept looking at it, and kept looking at it, and kept looking at it, and I just, there was something that was just off, and I couldn't tell what it was. So at first, I thought, well, maybe it's not level. Well, the way you can check level is you go up here, you go to the pointer tool, turn that pointer tool in, go up to your guide, and, uh, well, let's see, before I do that, yeah, well, okay, pull up that guide, drop that guide down to those lines that are supposed to be horizontal, and check them out. All those lines are right on it, so the lines are horizontal. Uh, so maybe it was a vertical, and I went out and I I, I drug the uh, the vertical lines out, and uh, I accidentally hit the wrong tool. I drug a vertical vertical line out. Eh. Great, come on treat me like that there we go I drug a vertical line out and I checked the vertical see if you turn that off you can see it see where that vertical line is and they were vertical I still couldn't figure it out so what I did was is I yeah, if you in order to check uh, an image one of the things that really works and I'll show you why it's important 
is Control J, duplicate the layer. When you're on your pointer tool and duplicate the layer, you get a bullseye dead in the center of the page. There's a little icon dead in the center of the page. That is dead center, vertical and horizontal, when you, uh, after you pop up the duplicate layer. It won't show it to you on the original layer, it'll only show it to you on the duplicate layer. Now we can drag out that horizontal, and if you drag it out, and if the Photoshop is set up the way most of it is, when you get close to it, it'll just pop right there in the, in the, uh, in the guide. And in that bullseye, there's a, a vertical and a horizontal line. Now when I did that and looked at it, and I looked down here, I saw what the problem was, was it's not centered on the page. Here's the center, and there is where the, the camera is. It's just simple of changing camera position just slightly, just dolly left, just a little bit, move a little left, and, and it would have been there, but I understand, I've been there a thousand times, uh, it's no big deal, so let's see what we can do. We have already duplicated the layer, I'm going to bring out the crop tool, and when you bring out the crop tool, let's uh, take this up because it's a wider image. Let's go up to 5x7 on the crop tool, 5x7 on the crop tool. Now when you switch to the crop tool, that bullseye no longer, let me uh, get rid of the guides, that bullseye no longer is in the center of the page, it is in the center of the crop. So now we can arrow key the crop over just a little bit till we get that bullseye dead in the center of the page again. Double click it to crop. Now you look at it and bam, all of a sudden it's comfortable. And uh, that is a way that you can check your centers and how you can center an image uh, using your crop tool uh, very simply. I wanted to share that little technique with you there.